Hi, everybody. Welcome to Coach Menachem uh, Bernfeld's program tonight. This is going to be the shir for Pesach. This is the shir that's going to bring us into Pesach. And we're starting. There's a lot of Messiah Snefesh going into tonight's program from all sides over here. So Hashem should use that Messiah Snefesh for the Siyat of the Shemai, that it should be powerful. And I wanted to say that we're past our four-year mark already. We forgot to mention it. We're already in the fifth year. Lashana Bob Yushalayim, Mahal Shain Dartan, Sheikh Tzakane Bim Heda, and Met Hashem very shortly. Sheikh will be here. We see already the Muhammad's Gog and Moga is happening live as we speak. So Met Hashem, this should be the last Pesach, but it should be the most meaningful Pesach. And it should really be out. So let's get into it. Tonight's Sheer, Sheer 182 with Coach Menachem. I want to first thank all the listeners for promoting it, letting people know about it. And uh, I really. Appreciate people that you know that put on their statuses and let people know about it. It's very powerful and it's a And I got today a lot of requests actually from Eretz to make sure about Eretz Yisrael because the, the matzah is so critical. I'm not sure we'll see what we can do about that. But we're planned now for the Pesach. We have to get into Pesach. So I just want to say, anybody wants to join the WhatsApp program, please to join our WhatsApp chats. WhatsApp me at seven three two three one four one seven one seven one zero, and I'll add you to the to the chats. Or you can go to menachembernfeld.com and sign up to his emails. He called out of his list. And Met Shem, every week he'll email you all the shiurim and everything that's going on in the Coach Menachem land. And let's get into it tonight. There's a lot to cover. Just give me one second. My computer is going crazy, as usual. Um, again, if anybody wants to join the communities, I'll also send out the link soon on the chats. Menachem will send it on the thing. Anybody who's watching the YouTube video, you can click on the like button, the subscribe button to join Coach Menachem. Thank you to all the advertising sponsors, the Lakewood Scoop here in Lakewood, Ellie and Ariel from Five Town Central, Chayla Kaufman from JCM for promoting us on all the digital networks. Again, if anybody's here for the first time, every Sunday night, 9.30, we do a share, we give chizik, we have rabbonim, different topics. This is the last year before Pesach. Hopefully there won't be another share. The next year will be Mashiach Tzikeno. If not, the next year will be May 5th, the Sunday after Pesach, with Rabbi Shimon Russell. We're going to be talking about crisis chinuch, understanding what our children need from us, and how we can be there for them, and not for our needs. It's going to be a very powerful share, so please join us. Tonight's share is share 100. And 82, we have the schus to have Harav going outside the Gravoy Noach Fried Schlit for the CEO of the program to give to the nice Gematria and Rabbi Ksira. After he gives the Gematria, he wants to know if you approve of the Gematria for Chtims. Or Noach, let's go. Didn't say that, but okay. Shir number 182 in, pre in preparing for Pesach. One of the focal points of the Seder is how we show tremendous gratitude how the Abish that took us out of Mitzrayim. Not only out of Mitzrayim, through all the Goliuses, the tremendous goodness and mercy that Abishnah had on us to save us from all our, all our enemies. Which leads us up to the night, tonight's Gematria 182. He repays us with goodness. Beautiful. Get good Gematria? Yes. Thank you, Rabnayach. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Thank you, Rabnayachim. One second, one second, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start off first with the opening with Coach Menachem. Coach Menachem, we're all here, Mr. Snafish tonight. Rabbi Ksira, me, you, people are here. I'm sure they're busy for Pesach. Why are we gathered here tonight? What are we trying to learn tonight? Welcome, everyone. Welcome to another Let's Get Real with Coach Menachem. Baruch Hashem, we're here with our uh, partners. Even if you're traveling, you managed. And we have this first to have Rabbi Ksira with us tonight. And uh, yeah, it is Erev Pesach, and everybody feels it in a different way. For some, preparing for Pesach, others um, maybe bringing a gift to their guest, or whichever way it is, we feel it, and especially we're going to be talking I'm, tonight. I'm going to say it, I said the best line, I have to say it. What's different this Sunday night than every other Sunday night? Beautiful, Manishtana, beautiful. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about it. Talking about the Seder night, the Seder night is, uh, you know, to say it's a, there's a lot going on. For everybody, it's different. You're talking about sitting for a few hours. Everybody has a different way of up upbringing, different things they come in, different expectations, different things, different way of looking at what does a Seder mean. There's a lot going on, whether it's Ruchnius, whether it's Gashmius. Other people have a hard time being by a Seder. But they don't want to be there. They want to be somebody else, somewhere else. They would love if it looked different. It it could bring up a lot of things. And for others, it's a beautiful thing. They get together with family, and they spend some time together after so you know after so many, 
so much preparation. But talking about getting ready, and especially for those who work so hard, cleaning and preparing, when it comes to the Seder, sometimes it's hard, the first Seder. You're falling asleep. And uh, finally you made it, somehow. You don't know how. It must have been a lot of Nisim, but you made it. And there you are, experiencing the Seder, maybe not the way you would want. Sometimes people uh, enjoy the second Seder better. Baruch Hashem and Chutzlaretz, we have a second Seder. But think about it, in it's Yisrael, you only have one. So that's it. That's the Seder. This is how you feel. I think for those who are with us for a while, being on the journey, understanding that it doesn't always work out the way we want, and it's a little bit of strength that we push, and we try, and we try to be there, whether it's preparing spiritually a little bit of what we can pick up, taking care of ourselves so we can be there a little bit more, but no matter what it looks like, this is exactly the way it's supposed to be, and that's the way Hashem wants it, and that's the Avoida. There are many stories that we'll hear, and for those you probably heard, talking about you know, spending a lot of money to buy the beautiful asterisk, and then before Yantif, before look, before you're going to become the mitzvah, somehow the pitum fell off. And the work is not to get angry and to understand, listen, Hashem, this is what Hashem wants from me now, not to lose it. And on Pesach, there's a lot of such stories. Preparing special, special matzos, making sure that the water is, is good and making sure that everything should work out. And then you clean the room and there's little kids walking around with a cookie and you're like, oh my gosh. The whole thing is like, what am I supposed to do now? There's a story, the Rebbe asked the Talmud to bring it, bring water for Pesach. He brought it in the barrel and made sure the whole way, it was a long way, it should be kosher to Pesach. And then when they opened it up, finally they got to the Rebbe and there was a bagel there. On top, there was chametz on top, and then he lost it. To understand that we we have we have to include Hashem in this whole in this whole thing. We try very hard, and we're doing it for Hashem. We need a tefillah. Hashem, please help us. Listen, I I'm not perfect. I can't do this by myself. I need you on my side. I'll try my best. Please be there. And slowly, that's how we do it. We have another few days to get ready, and hopefully, you know, we should be able to. Get there on time, the way, you know, with uh, Chavaz Adas. And then by the Seder, we should be able to be there for the kids, whether we have guests or we're a guest. And it should work out. So here we are, Baruch Hashem, we have this post, have Rabbi Kassira, the Rosh Hashiva. And we can discuss a little bit to see how we can make it a little bit easier. What are we looking for? People want to connect, want to tap in. So Mitzvah Hashem, we should have this chus. We should, we should be able to pick up, take what we what what people we can use to make it a little bit easier to connect to Mr. Shem. Thank you so much. Beautiful opening. So let's get into tonight's program. And was like to have the Shiva there, Rabbi Kassira. And I have to be honest with you, Rabbi Kassira, he was chosen from Hashem to be here. We tried other people and Rabbi Kassira even mentioned other people to give this year, but Hashem wanted Rabbi Kassira to be here. So now that he's here, let's let's get into it. Tonight's year, we called it Maximizing the Seder Night, a step-by-step -step guide for including all our children, our guests, in the Heilige Holy Experience. And we're zeichet to have Rabbi Ksira, Rabbi Ksira, send the Yossi Ksira, Rosh Hashiva, the of Eatontown, the Shiva geared for boys who haven't succeeded in the mainstream yeshivas. Rabbi Ksira is involved in struggling teens for close to two decades. Rabbi Ksira's experience with Chinuch, the proper gasp of issues that today has made him sort out by parents, teens, and Mechanchem. And really, that's just his uh, yeshiva background, but really, I know Rabbi Ksira on a personal level. Ksira is involved in a lot of things, and Mishpachas, and Shalom Bayis, and the reason why this year came to be, honestly speaking, is because during the years of COVID, during the year of COVID, a lot of Rabbi Ksira's Talmidim had to make say to themselves and Rabbi Ksira, put out a step-by-step -step video guide and uh, to show his Talmidim how to fear say there, how things are going, what the Nyanama say there is. And actually tomorrow night, he's actually giving even a shir and a practical alochus of, of the say there, what's the Rabbanu, what's the rice, a lot of people, you know. And really understand a lot of stuff and you know feeling of going into this holy holy holiday a feeling of understanding what it is a feeling of connecting with it there's so much going on in the world and so much craziness and there's so much billable so much confusion that we want to i want to i want to focus on the say that i want to be present i want to enjoy it 
I want to understand what's going on and I want to connect with Hashem. And like I said in the beginning, hopefully this will be the last header. Hopefully Mashiach has come out here. It looks like he's really close. Well, I hope so. But uh, Rabbi Ksira, it's close again to have you here. Thank you for everything you do for Klai Yisrael. And the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ushi. Thank you very much, Coach Menachem. Thank you, uh, Rabbi Noyach. And thank you to all the listeners and to participants of the share tonight. As we said, and I heard before, that what's this Sunday night different than all other Sunday nights? And Baruch Hashem, Ushi and Coach Menachem have been having this chus for over four years of presenting Limud HaToy Rabim, lots of chinuch tips, lots of tips in Seder HaChaim, helping thousands and thousands of people along the way. Coach Baruch to continue Baruch HaTzloch in all in Yonim, and then we should have Nachis and Simchas together. Um, as Ushi had said a little bit in the introduction, maximizing the Seder, I think we should discuss just a few minutes, a little bit, the Seder night, what it means Seder night, and what our proper our proper approach should be to this Heiligen night, when Claudius was referred to as Seder Nacht, or the Seder night. Uh, um, additionally, we'll try to maybe do some practical step-by-steps, as Ushi had mentioned, during the years of COVID, I put a step-by-step -step video, which is available if anyone wants to reach out privately to either Ushi or myself, to especially helpful for people who are making the Seder the first After time. After the Shir, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to send out an email. We're going to send out a connect, uh, thing to the to the Shir if anybody wants to watch the step-by-step -step guide. I think I watch a few clips of it. It's very, very valuable, especially if anybody who's fearing a Seder for the first time, anybody who, who needs that Chinuch or just really feel they want that up. I'm sorry, Rebbe, because continue. Right. So what I think we'll start this, especially mentioning the Eden of Eretz Yisrael, the Klai Yisrael needs the Yeshua, especially the Eden of Eretz Yisrael. Um, I'll start with a, a famous Dvart, a famous Dvart that the Sevier Tzareba, he used to say a little Vart, a cute little joke. But he said like this, he said, the Israelis got it right. The Israelis know what they're talking about. And his Chastidim asked the Rebbe, what do you mean? He says, when you ask, when you, when you go over to any Yid in Eretz Yisrael, or many of us have been to Eretz Yisrael, you speak to someone from Eretz Yisrael on the phone, and you ask them, so how are things doing? Manishma, and the right away answer is Hakol Beseder. Hakol Beseder, that's the typical, the typical Israeli answer, Hakol Beseder. So Chaimai used to say that the Israelis don't realize how right they are. Hakol Beseder. Everything, Alts, he said in Yiddish, Alts licked in the Seder. Everything is in Seder. The Seder night is one night that there's so much in that night. Hakol, there's everything in that night. There's bracha in that night. There's ashpois in that night. There's mitzvahs in that night. There's, there's chinuch for our children in that night. Anything a yid needs lies in that Seder night. And if we do that Seder night properly, and we have the proper approach to the Seder night, and we prepare ourselves properly for Seder night, then we could be assured that the entire year will be so much of a better year, and the entire year will be, go so much easier, because Hakol Baseder, everything lies in the Seder night. And if we look at it that way, we realize what an awesome night the Seder night is. Our perspective changes. The Hitler told the Abdur of his Yotzeh to his Yasser and Shabbos said, and you know, we like to discuss a little bit Chinuch, as Oshie had mentioned, I'm involved in Chinuch as well, but we all know of Machanach our children or Machanach our Talmidim. There are many times we could talk to our children, we could talk to our Talmidim, and as much as we tell them, as much as we try to give them some advice, we talk, try to tell them some divrei chinuch, we don't know, we can never be assured if they're really listening, if what we're telling them is going is, is actually being absorbed. You know, one never knows. We, as parents, as rabbeim, as mechanchim, we have it. We could go ahead and give over what we want to give over to our children. But how do we know that they're absorbing and taking in what we're saying? But Oivi so the Abderov says that's every that's every day besides Seyed Nach. When the Torah says he got we have a mitzvah to speak to our children. There's a mitzvah on Seder night to say sippi tzias mitzayim to our children. It's not just a mitzvah. The Levincha, the Abderav says, is a haftacha as well. Hashem gives us a promise. It's the one night a year that if you're going to speak to your children, then they will listen. It's a night that they will listen what you have to say. So if we realize we have an opportunity, the few hours of say the night, the four or five hours, the four or five, six hours that a family sits together by say the night, you have an awesome opportunity, a treasure of a night that what you will tell over to your children, what you will tell them will be absorbed. They'll take it all in. It even takes takes to take it a little bit of a bit of a step forward, further. We know the Arachayim says, and it's a school of many people who 
We need bracha. I want to be helped with children. Learn this Archaim HaKadosh on Seder night. The Higadetol of Vincha that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives you a haftach of the When you're going to speak on Seder night, Levincha, you will have children. Your children will give you naches. So that's why by just going, realizing that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us a few hours in the year to be able to, an opportunity for parents and children to bond in such a beautiful way, similar to Achas Hayama, where it says, That's the opportunity that we have on Seder night. And let's, so therefore, let's make sure that we utilize opportunity. And the greatest thing what we could do to utilize opportunity is that when we come to a Seder, and everyone's Seder is different, although we have to remember the words of the Maranayim, that at the Seder night, we're doing it exactly the way they did it in Mitzrayim. You didn't have been doing a Seder for thousands of years, for over 3,000 years, and they do it in the same way that in Mitzrayim, that first Seder, right before HaKadosh Baruch Hu came and took B'nai Yisrael out of Mitzrayim, Kla Yisrael made a Seder, as it says in the Torah, and we continue in doing that Seder, it's passed over from father to son, from grandfather to, to grandchild, to, 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 to great-grandchildren. We're, we're a link in that Messiah, that's the Messiah of of Seder nights. We have this, uh, we, have, we, we, we do the Seder the same way, and to, to understand, Seder is a time when family gets together. There are different dynamics. Some people have just an immediate family. Many families have where it's a large table with their grandparents and great-grandparents and lots of grandchildren. And what we're going to try to also focus on tonight, and I'll open it to questions as well, is how to include everyone in the Seder. Sometimes there are children that are different types. Some, some children like a fast Seder. Some children like a... A slower Seder, obviously there's different interests in children. Some are more interested, some are less interested. You have little children who come with their notebooks and their artillery and all their all the vertach and have in school and they want to say everything. And others, others will say, okay, let's move on. How can we include everyone into the Seder? But before we ask that we understand how we include everyone in the Seder, we have to understand that everyone is invited to a Seder. Every Yiddish kind, as it says in the God itself, the Torah says this, the Haggadah says specifically, that's how we started the Seder, that every child that's possible in Klai Yisrael, Chacham, Rosh, Tam, She'eni, Yedei, Elishal, they're all invited to the Seder. The Torah speaks of four different places, how to address your children about the Seder night, about the mitzvahs of the Seder night. So it's one night, few mitzvahs, and the Torah tells you specifically how to speak to each individual child. And all these four children can be around your one table. I know everyone's going to ask the obvious question, but we know that we say in the Haggadah that the Russia is not invited. To Russia, we tell the Russia, but of course, all the Mepharshim explain that that only applies if he wouldn't have been a Mitzrayim because there the Rishayim were not taken out of Mitzrayim. But once we got out of Mitzrayim and we had a Kabbalah Satira, even the Russia has this Chalik and Taira. Even the Russia has a seat by the Seder. Even the Russia is an active participant of the, by the Seder. So all children and all types of Yidin are together this, by the Seder. And it's something amazing throughout Klai So We hear different stories of Mesir Snefish. One of the main stories you always hear about Seder night, over and over again, you hear the stories of people who made the Nefesh during the years of the blood libel, all had to do with Seder night. The years of Spanish Inquisition, the, the Yidim, the Yidim, the Anusim, the Moranos, story after story about, about how the Mesa Nefesh on Seder night to do the mitzvahs of the Seder night. Seems like many of the stories that we know about the Yidim in Spain during the Spanish Inquisition was all about Seder night. So we see we have this beautiful opportunity where a link in the chain that never got broken for years Yidim will make an effort to the Seder so just by knowing that and by realizing that, that everyone's invited to the Seder everyone's part of the Seder and whatever I say by the Seder, obviously I'm speaking to the fathers out there, but it's not just the fathers it's the mothers as well and whoever's a part of the Seder, if I could just quote the Lushan of the Shlach Kaddish says the Shlach Kaddish uses a Lushan that he says when you come home from Shul he says that what should you and your wife be like when you come home from shul on, on Pesach night? Imagine yourself when you walk into the door on uh, after davening on Pesach night, you are a melech and your wife is a malka, a king and a queen. You are the king of the house and the wife is a queen. So the mother and father husband and wife are equally involved by setting the tone of the Seder, by setting the tone 
as a king and a queen. Of course, there's a lot to be myrich, and maybe we should open to questions. I just want to say over the words that in some Haggadahs, if you look in the introduction to the Haggadah, the introduction to the Haggadah by Magid, there's a piece of the Zayr HaKadosh. And the Zayr HaKadosh says an amazing, amazing thing. If you see, you have a translation. The Zayr HaKadosh says that on Seder night, HaKadosh Baruch Hu calls the Malachim together, and he says, I don't want you to say Shira tonight. We know Malachim say Shira every single night to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem says, tonight, I don't want you to say Shira. You know why? Because I want you to come with me. The Zayr HaKadosh says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, La Pamal Delay, I want you to come to me to every Yiddish house and hear how the Yidden are singing my praises tonight. Imagine that. Every single Seder, regardless of where you are, if you're in your own personal house, if you're a guest somewhere, even if you're in a hotel or if you're in some, or if you're a few families together, by every Seder, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is there by that Seder with the Kapamal Yishamayla, with all his malachim, listening in on our Seder, listening and hearing all the shvachim and all the praises that one gives to HaKadosh Baruch for taking us Mitzrayim. So this takes out, this 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 puts us in a perspective what a Heiligenite it is. Just on a little bit of a practical sense, what should be, what should we be, what should, uh, how should we want on a practical way, what should be the person's proper conduct to say, say tonight? Like we said, the Shlach Kaddish. Yes. Just imagine yourself, you're a Melech and a Malka. You're a Melech. Every man is a Melech, is a king, and every woman is a Malka, is a queen. And think about yourself. I am the king. I am a queen. The Chinuch, the Sefer Chinuch says a very, very interesting thing. He says, we know there's a mitzvah by Karban Pesach. One of the mitzvahs by Karban Pesach was that one was not allowed to break a bone of the carbon Pesach. He couldn't bite into a bone. Sometimes you have a good piece of steak, but you have a juicy piece of chicken. You like to then bite into the bone and suck out some of the marrow in the bone. If you did that with a carbon Pesach, you were over a lav. You, you literally one of the lav. You were over an avera by breaking a bone of the carbon Pesach. And the Chinuch asks, why? Why do we have such a mitzvah? What's the reason for such a mitzvah? And he says, because Pesach night, we are a king. You're sitting by a by a princely dinner. You're sitting by a state dinner, Pesach night. Biting into a bone, he says, is peasant-like. Someone that's very hungry, someone that asks like a peasant, when he finishes eating, not just does he eat the meat, he bites into the bone. On Pesach night, you have an Easter. You have to act in a princely manner. You can't act like a peasant. And that has to be, I believe, that has to be the way that we go with every Seder. The Seder is, I am a king, and I'm going to elevate my entire family to become part of the royal family. We're going to act with royalty. Of course, we know everyone takes out the most beautiful dishes for the Seder, and you put out the most beautiful silverware for the Seder. But it's besides just what you do to, to um, set the table. You yourself have to act and bring out the, bring out the fact that we are B'nai Malachim. We are an elevated nation. We are a nation that acts like kings and queens, and that has to be how we act. Of course, in a very practical way, everyone must know their family. If you have little children, the Seder must be very child-friendly. The Seder must be, obviously, everyone has their issues with the Seder, where one's going to sit, and there's different fights over the seats, and who gets a better Haggadah, and who gets the what type of wine you're going to drink. But once we settle down, we have to start, we have to make the Seder child friendly. The children must be into it. There's so many stories, as Menachem said before, we know many stories of G'day Yisrael. People came to the Seder thinking they're going to hear big chidushim, thinking they're going to hear deep, deep divrei Torah. And all they heard was how they touched the Seder. They literally touched the Haggadah in a very beautiful, simplistic way. They added it with stories. They added Midrashim. And that's what a father has to do. You have to prepare a father, a mother. Prepare yourself before and get some good Haggadahs. Get some colorful Haggadahs. Keep your children interested. And if it's a large Seder, if many families are sitting together, Together. There's a mitzvah on each father. He got it to the bincha, and it might be a mitzvah as the mother as well. Sit with your children, tell them something, get them interested, sing with them the songs, sing songs by the Seder. There's so many parts of the Haggadah that we could sing. The main thing is to get the children involved in the Seder, that they should feel part of it and feel this amazing experience and to be able to tap into the Kedusha of the Seligonite.
We're going to go into polls, and then again, but anybody wants to ask live questions, you have uh, Rabbi Kassira here. He's open to all types of questions. I got a few interesting questions, Rabbi Kassira. If you're ready for some powerful ones, um, we're going to start with a poll, and everybody feel free to uh, answer your opinions. I want to see where everybody's holding. Here we go. Okay, the first question on the poll. How do you find leading or participating in a safety? General question, four options. One, very interesting and enjoyable. Number two, it's okay, but I'm really looking forward to the food part. Shulchan Aruch, ah, geschmack. Number three, it's really long and boring. I don't like it at all. Or number five, honestly, I don't understand most of it, and I dread it. Second question, how do your your children participate in this either? Your personal children, how do they participate in this either? They're actively participating in reading, and they ask questions. They're very involved. Number two, they don't. They listen, but they don't really engage. Number three, they get re re restless and distracted. Or number four, we don't involve the children in the Seder at all. We just do the Seder. Whatever they do, they do. It's be honest. It's not what the right answer is. It's what, it's what you're dealing with. It's what your situation is. The last question, which part of the same day do you find the most meaningful? The saying of the Agada, the singing of traditional songs, all the songs, the Nagunim, Chad Gadia, Hishamda, what's what is that the songs? The discussion of the Tzis Mitzrayim, the relevance to today's times, or just spending time with friends and family and having a good time. What, what's the most meaningful part that you take out of the Seder? So everybody answer the questions to the best of your ability. Be honest. It's anonymous, so you could say really what you feel. We'll take it from there. While everybody's answering the poll, I just want to say that uh, I was over here Shabbos in North Carolina by Rabbi Plotkin. He's here, he's on the Shear. And I want to say, first of all, I him. I was so, I got so much chizik the Shabbos from Rabbi Plotkin in North Carolina over here. He's a here. His house is open. There he is, Rabbi Plotkin. That's a tzaddik, he's like, I had a tremendous amount of chizik from him. He has a, a thing over here in North Carolina, a booth, and so many, maybe 50, 100 years didn't come for supper. And he's mechazik, and he's he, he gives out to Rabbi Kassi. Ready for this? Four thousand matzahs to all the yidden in 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 in, uh, in his area, North Carolina. And people came Shabbos. It was just it was such a powerful Shabbos, just unbelievable. I mamish felt with Rabbi Plotkin like I, like Mashiach is here ready. Sorry, Rabbi Plotkin, I'm just saying the truth. If you're better me, whatever you know, don't talk to me anymore. But exalt from the hearts. <laughs> Okay, let's get to the answer. So, uh, Reb Ushi, if I'm allowed to say a few words. Oh, sure, dog, dog, dog. And, and my phone is almost going to die, but I'm going to want to say that, you know, a lot of times they say it about, you go to Mevakar Achayla, Nechum Avelim, and people walk out and they think that they are giving Chizuk and they get Chizuk. And I can tell you, I'm a Shliach over here, a Shliach of the Rebbe, you know, 15 years in North Carolina. I've seen all different types from Chizuk, from Litvin, modern Orthodox, Fadish, or things like that. I can tell you actually what I'm most nispal from is that you can have a person was this is can rav is this can grace a darshan is this can grace a mensch and Eric and Tan he can accomplish gedolis when it flies and when you were talking to me about your zoom that you have and you made it sound like it was a derech I the thing you like you do between mitcha I was like you know every Sunday night but there's <laughs> thousands of yidin that that listen to it and are and that are they appreciate it and you don't have to be all you need is a phone a, a zoom a laptop whatever it is. And you can be made with Taira and you can be made with Yidin. And for that itself, you don't have to have a title. You don't have to have a Maisid. You don't have... We lost them. Like I told her, I told her, I'm the worldwide Shliach. I'm not the North Carolina Shliach. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to share the polls. This is what the oil man answers. And I'm going to get right into it. Listen to this. How do, how do you find leading a participating Seder? 80% of the people are Abixiro. They find it interesting and enjoyable, which is, I'm, I'm very, very happy to hear this. 11% find that it's okay, but really looking forward to the food. I, I'm, I'm a little bit with 11%. Uh, the 4%, that's really boring, and I don't like it at all. And 5%, honestly, I don't understand, and I dread most of it, and I dread it. Second question, how do you how do your children participate in the Seder? 65% of people here have said the children are actively reading, and they're part of it. 20% say they listen, but... Um, they don't engage. 15% say they get restless and distracted. And 0% they don't involve the children. So we, have a, we have a very hush crowd of it. <laughs> Last question. Which part of the say do you find the most meaningful? 7% people, only 7% of people said Dagoda. 31% of people say the singing of the songs. 
the number one was the discussion of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the relevance in today's times. And 27% just spending quality time with the family and having a good time. So, which is very interesting. Baruch Hashem, we have a very growing island over here. Rebbe if you want to mention anything on the on the, on the the polls, we could, and then we'll, we could jump straight into the questions. As you said, it seems like that everyone understands the Kedusha of the Seder, the beauty of the Seder, and they make an effort in it, as, as, as it's evident in the poll, that they make an effort in it, A, to involve the children, B, to make this Yitzhak Mitzrayim relevant, to make it personal, and that is exactly what's supposed to be done. And it seems like that's what they, they've seen by their parents, by their Seder, and by their grandparents. And they should continue that we should continue doing it. Okay, Gavaldik. Rabbi Ksira, we're going to jump into some questions. Anybody wants to ask live, please text me. All the live questions go first. You have a regular question, you can text as well. There's a lot of questions. First basic question we're going to get into. I understand the night of Pesach is a Muna. But personally, the person is saying, I don't connect to Pesach. I don't connect through the Agada. How should I connect? How, as the person giving over to my children and to people, I don't feel anything myself. How should I get myself into that mode to be able to give over to Yenem? Okay, so first of all, we know that part of the Agada is, we say this in the Haggadah, the Rambam says this, Part of saying that God is, is to connect to it, that you should feel as if you are leading, leaving Mitzrayim. And it may be a family, a few minutes, you know, sometime during the Haggadah, should try to imagine leaving Mitzrayim. And as we say that God, not just our, 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 not just our children, how can you personally connect it? So think of personal ge'ulay. So think of personal ways how Hashem helped you. Many of us were zayich to sit by it with, with storm with our grandparents, and many of the Holocaust survivors would say their personal stories, how they themselves were rescued or saved, or certain nisim that they had on Pesach by 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 saying a personal nace and recounting a personal nace, that is a way that you're going to connect yourself. Finding a Kaddish Baruch Hu in your day-to-day life, speaking about the Muna. Yes, the thrust of, of Pesach Nach is Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim. But we speak about Avram Avinu. We speak about Mitzchiloi Avedo So maybe you can connect to that. It's the Amuna Baha Kaddish Baruch Hu. Pesach is the Yom Tev of Amuna. There's so many ways that one has to be able to connect to Amuna. If you, for some reason, you feel you're not connected to the Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim, you must connect somehow to the Amuna HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Hashkach Pratis, on a daily basis, or or on a um, something that happened to your personal family, or to your grandparents, and through that, you're going to feel the Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim as well, because you'll realize and recognize that all our personal Geulahs, and all our personal Nisim, are all had the site and all the foundation was in Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim. Very good. I'm just going to add that we have to connect to something that's negative for us, especially what happened um, last night in Eretz Yisrael. Just, just unbelievable how Hashem is taking care of us. I'm saying maybe we can connect a little bit. What's happening today? It's not like 10 years ago, 1,000 years ago. It's, it's actually happening today. Something that we can connect and uh, see Yad Hashem. There's another uh, witnessing this. Yeah, we are witnessing this. Right, but but we just still have to connect. They say in Mitzrayim, not everybody went out. So even in Mitzrayim, which we think, you know, if I'll be in Mitzrayim, I would see the Nisim, I would connect. But it's not. It's not true. Not everybody left. Not everybody. You have to be able to to see it and connect to it. So here's here's a question that somebody sent in. I'm I'm a beginner in all of this. I did see the seder by my father, but wasn't involved. And now I'm making my own seder. What are the basics I should focus on? So just first of all, as an introduction, that is exactly why we made the video a few years back. It's simply because we know we've all been by a seder. Many of us sat through the seder, but when it comes to lead a seder, when it comes to make the seder, you say, now what am I? to do and uh i i know when i sent out the video one of someone told me that you know he looked at the video and he he took notes just to know what to do 
The answer to this um, person who's making the say the first time, first of all, is know your family. Obviously, know the age of your children, know the guests that you're going to have, um, and therefore you know what to focus on. If it's younger children, it's going to be hard to focus on the end of the Haggadah when you're getting through all the Pesukim. Obviously, if it's younger ch children, the Makis, if your children love um, visual aids, yes, there's puppets out there and there are different uh, um, pictures and uh, different things that you can literally make the Seder alive. People like to go really overboard with putting on different masks and uh, costumes to be able to feel the Seder. But anything, the, the focus has to be that your children should be involved. Your children should feel it. Your children should see your Simcha. That is the focus. Um, a beautiful thing to focus on is also, I know this comes to, towards the end of the Seder, is people, but see people that's usually were very, very tired by then. But Halal, Kles Shalal Yo, Halal, if you could sing Halal together, there are parts of Halal, most of Halal has songs to it. So if your children are up to it, it's just a time to, to give out your thanks to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's a beautiful thing to focus on as well. What the focus shouldn't be on is obviously, is just to rush, as though she said, to just try to rush and then getting to the meal. But you never know, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives you the Siyat HaDashmai. You're going to make the Seder. You'll start saying a piece of God, you'll say a story, and that could lead into a discussion. Allow those discussions to happen. Allow, elaborate on the different midrashim. That is, of course, you know, you're spoke, your focus should be on the CPTS time and making it real that your children should be able to feel it. Yeah, Rabbi Sir, I'm going to throw you a very hard question, but um, a girl texted me this question. She's 19 years old. I'm not sure if my question comes here, but I'll ask it anyway. I'm a struggling teen who's currently healing from very deep traumas. Okay? I'm maybe in oven. Right now, I have no feeling whatsoever towards Yiddishkeit and Pesach. Although on the outside, I look, and I, I look, I look totally, from, I'm struggling to understand how to celebrate the holiday of freedom, yet I'm so enchained, entangled, so much emotional pain. At the same time, I'm dreading it to say there, which the person that was that hurt me is going to be there as well. And I, I have to tend to say the night with such people. The whole place brings back these triggers and it hurts me so much. I have no interest in attending whatsoever. What should I do? So we, this we, is a very we loaded question. We, we could, yeah, it's a very loaded question. Let's just very loaded, loaded question. question. A and, teenager and, that and, really has and, no feeling towards right. Yiddish and suffering. Right. But that's one part of the question. Obviously, the loaded part of the question where we have to feel in this young girl's pain, that obviously she feels triggered because some people, being by the Seder, are going to either bring back past traumas, which is a, a very personal um, experience, which she should get personal direction to someone that she trusts, either a therapist or a rob that she trusts, because it's a real personal question. Whenever the incident, whenever, whenever, whenever these people are there, either Seder night, but from all nights, when it's Seder night, and you're feeling a little bit, um, almost like she's saying, and she's wording in the question, that here I'm supposed to be celebrating the us becoming a nation and becoming part of a, the Amanifcher, and people sitting right next to me either hurt me in different ways. So it's very hard to to have that uh, to, to to have that feeling. Um. She's obviously feeling, you know, we know the Seder is set up, as it says in the Gemara, and it's said in the Gemara, that the Seder is set up in two parts. Part of the night, we we commemorate. It's hard to use the word to term to celebrate. We commemorate the actual Shibud Mitzrayim, us being in Gullus. We eat Mara. There's a mitzvah to eat Mara. The Mafar Shemaz. So why do we eat Mara? We should only be drinking wine and eating matzah and doing mitzvahs to celebrate the freedom. Why are we eating mara when we remember to, to remember that mara was chayehem? This part of the night that we speak about avadam hayinu metchilo ayv deavaydazar. We speak about the hard work halach ma'anya. Part of the night, it's mas the, the, the Haggadah is only said in the way of maschil bignus. We have to discuss about the hardship and then misayim bishvach. Why don't we just go to the good part? Why don't we go jump like you know, like have, skip half that god and go straight to to the to the shvach? Obviously, part of it is feeling the shibud mitzrayim, and this young girl could really feel it on a personal ba basis that she says she's chained, she was hurt, and she feel she really feel feels the shibud. So it's hard to say she's really feeling, and we have, and and hurt. What I'm going to say to her first of all. 
is use the opportunity of say the night, as he said, it's a night when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is sitting there by her table, to daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I'm in the Golis, let me sense Geula as well, let me feel, let me be able to feel the Geula, if she does that personal tefillah to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, or personal connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and maybe part of the Geula is, it's very hard for me to give in a personal way, because this gives me so much here, and we chas v'shalom don't want to be um, indifferent or callous to a girl that's crying out, and she could really feel the 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 Vayitzaku, how Yidin cried out, even though the crying sometimes they, as refer sometimes was a quiet cry. They they do the the Mitzvim suppressed them, but she could say Hakadosh Baruch Hu, by me being want just wanting to connect, not knowing how to connect, by me just wanting to connect. That should be my feel, the way I feel, Gu'ula, just being close to you. Let me speak to HaKadosh Baruch Hu personally. Make it a very, very personal way. Um, it's hard for how much to say, how much she should, should interact, to put on the show because there are going to be such a circumstance there. But you could use, surely use this opportunity to at, try to tap in the Gilu Shechino that each family has on Pesach night. Somebody texted the fact that she's here tonight just to get chizik, that alone shows whatever warrior she is. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's the mysterious message. And this is her private secret that she has with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Because no one knows besides Hashem, who's there by the Seder, what, what Kayach it took for her to come that night, sitting there alongside with the people that, that betrayed her so much. And just being there, it's, and it, it's a secret. It's a secret that only she and Hashem shares. And that 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 connection and that closeness could be the way she connects on Seder night as well. I heard once of art. If you think about it, the Yidden went out of Mitzrayim, I think in two thousand seven, something like 2,500? Right. And now we're in five five seven, right? So it's basically like twenty five, something like that. About two thousand years. Three, 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 almost three, uh, thirty three, uh, uh, three thousand three hundred years ago. He said the Messiah from the first Pesach till now, and most people had usually by a Seder from the youngest to the oldest is like about an 80 year gap, right? To the Zayda and Elta Zayda. So it goes back maybe 30 dairas. There was 30 Sadarim from the actual, it's not like we're dealing 3,000 years from now. You know what I'm saying? It was just a motif of the. the... And, and once you're saying, and to address this girl as well, that um, we have to realize that. When the Kodesh Baruch Hu took us out of Mitzrayim, may Av the Sacheris, it's not just that the oppression stopped, that we were not slaves anymore, that we stopped working, now we're free people. HaKadosh Baruch Hu took out of us any sense of being a slave. We don't have a slave-like mentality, like we said at the beginning of, of the of the shir. That Yidin on Bnei Malachim, in one instant in the Yitzhiyah's time, they went from being slaves, even though the year before they were not slaves anymore, they weren't working, but they were still the people that used to be slaves. A Yid has no more zeich, means the slavery, not just we're not slaves anymore, anymore, the slavery is out of us. Unfortunately, there are people because of these different issues that go through, we don't have to enumerate, and many of them are addressed on your show, in this kid, that Hashem, that you do, uh, there are people that are chained using that, they they, they are living there, they're chained within them, they don't have the, out the external change, but they're bound down by different traumas, they're bound down by different people that, that, that hurt them in either physically or emotionally in different ways, which we don't have to elaborate here. That is the same type of slavery. It's the same type of slavery. And Pesach would be, there's no better time to utilize the time this man to become, a, we, we, it, it, it's incumbent upon all of us, everyone. We should all daven for these, obviously girls and that, other young teenagers who are going through this, that we should dive and they, they should all get the ultimate cheres. This very Pesach should bring everyone who's chained down in different ways that they should get their cheres as well. Okay, Maridik, let's go to the next question. Let's see if this person wants to ask live. One second, Rebecca Sira. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, this is a very important question, and we touched on it a little bit, but I really want to get into it. What to do 
with children in general that are not interested in the Seder or like they're very struggling in each night. How do I get them to be prepared for Seder? Like, I don't want to say very to look to them. They have zero interest in connecting. How do I really try and, and their way, you know, to make them feel uplifted and feel the Kedusha of Pesach? Struggling children. So this is a double question. There's a question of how do you get struggling children interested in Pesach? And then there's a question if a family has one or two struggling children and they're going to be part of the greater family. So you have uh, some children, you have some sons or son-in-laws who they are saying that Vatari is enjoying all the all the, the you know the, the, the length of the Haggadah, the Magid. And then you have a child that's going outside to the porch and smoking. It's yum to be a lot of smoke at best. Um, and hopefully coming back to Shulchan Aruch. So that there's, there's one, the first, the, the way the question was asked, how do you get struggling children involved in Pesach. So there's nothing, every neshama connects to Simcha Shal Mitzvah. Every neshama connects to Simcha Mitzvah. And in certain families, yeah, this, the Simcha Shal Mitzvah might come in the Shulchan Aruch, and it might have to be, if you realize, you have to gauge, you have to gauge the the attention level and the the interest level of the people sitting at your Seder. And if you realize that you have to rush and that that, 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 that people are falling asleep or they're not interested, and some Sometimes it's not even a struggle child. Sometimes you see it's your wife or 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 people are preparing to say that they want to get the shulchan aruch because they've they've been working so much before Yom Tov and they want to enjoy the seder as well and they can't keep their eyes open. So you have to be able to gauge them and sometimes put that uh, uh, put that I don't want to use the term rush, but be able to get the shulchan aruch and then sing songs and then then uh, then elaborate over how. Songs is always a beautiful way to connect. Most people connect to Neg- to, to Nagina to songs. Even if someone's a struggling child, if we could, if we could sing together and thank a Kaddish Baruch Hu, another way to connect stories. Stories usually piques people' interest. It's prepare stories. So you might not say the typical the shot in the Haggadah. You might not say, but saying a story that has to do with Geul, that has to do with the time. That's ways to connect. Just. Being together by the Seder, the family experience, like it said on the on the poll before, and so many people answered, they love about the Seder, just being together with the family and reiterating how much you're happy that the family is together. That's a way to get to get everyone to connect. And that already answers our second way. Second way. A parent has to be able to juggle. You know, there's different needs in children and there's different types of children and there's quieter children and there's more loud children and the children that are obviously bigger to me, the Chachamim, and become more prepared. And there, there are children that are just... Uh, you might not have much. I mean, you have to be able to juggle. Uh, you know, I, I, I spoke to a, I spoke a, a few years back to a, I met a, a Rebbe, an Admer from Eretz Yisrael, who told, told me that he has a child that's struggling. And he went in Eretz Yisrael, remember, there's only one Seder. And he told me he invited, he wanted very, his son was married, he wanted, he wanted his son to come for Pesach, very much to be by him for Pesach. And he's, he's, his son knew his father as a rabbi. He says, Tati, I'm coming on one condition to Pesach. I don't want a long Seder. I, I, you know, I'll be by you for the Seder. I'll come with my wife to the Seder. But, you know, no dvatars. We just got to make, got to basically get it over quickly. And the rabbi told me, you know what I did? I did that. I knew that's what my son needed. I'll be able to maybe after the Seder speak to the other children. But I knew that's my son's ship. That was Messias never she did it. But the son was by the Seder. He said he was there from beginning to end. He told me, the Rebbe told me himself. I, I, I made a quicker Seder. Obviously, he didn't have a tish. It was a private family Seder. But even being a Rebbe and being a person that really had a lot to, to say, he gave this child what he needed, and he was able to work it out with his other children as well. I just want to jump in. Somebody texted so there's many siblings who aren't struggling and feel people don't notice them as much since they're trying so hard for the struggling children. We know it's hard for parents, but don't forget it's also the other, you have the other side also that balance is very difficult as well. Which is a, a very, very true point, right? A very, very true point. And that has to, that's what I'm saying, each, each person has to be able to, um, each, uh, each family has to be able to, um, you know, juggle and do that part well and give each child what they need. Like I said, it's, you know. You have to unmute. Yeah, you mute it. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's one, it's, it's one of the hardest things. I don't know if you have time, but I, I believe I once said this publicly. 
the, uh, the parasha ne- in the next three parashas, we have a very interesting mitzvah. And, and, and uh, when I saw this, there's a mitzvah that's just called that in the times of, in the times of people would do Avedah Zara, there would be Mavir Zare Lamoilach. One of the ways they did Avedah Zara was they literally took the, the children and threw them into the fire Lamoilach. Moilach was a, a huge flame, a fiery flame, and they literally threw the children into the fire for Avedah Zara. And the Torah says, besides Avera of Avedah Zara, you're not allowed to throw your children Lamoilach to the fire called Moilach. A few times the Torah says in Achamais and in Kedoshim. And the Gemara says something very interesting, that the only a person who does that is Chayv Misa. He gets the death penalty, according to the Torah. And the Gemara says something very interesting. He only Chayv Misa, if a person sends, puts in one child or two children, but if he puts, throws all his children into the fire, the Torah says, Mi Zarai, from his children, Vulai Kol Zarai, not all his children. If a person throws all his children to the fire, he's not Chayv Misa. And the Roshanim asks why. Why? Why is this? He, this person he was a real balaver. He gave all his children to Abay Dazar. And the Chinuch says something so amazing. Chinuch says, because they, he said that the priests of Abay Dazar, they used to convince the people that if you do something, if you give sacrifice one child, then the other children will somehow turn out properly. That's the way they convinced the simple people then of, of the society, this, this pagan society, if you throw one child into a fire, you sacrifice one child, your other children then will turn out properly. So therefore the Chinuch said, you had to throw one child in and leave one child over. But if you throw all your children in, that's not the way you do this of Zara. But we see from this Chinuch something so profound that we we can never say, and it works both ways, as, as Ushi, as you just said, we can't sacrifice one child for the betterment of the other child. That is in some way doing moilach. For example, if we have a child that's struggling, we say, you know, I'm just going to forget about him. Forget, forget about this child. And I'll concentrate on my children that's doing well. That is in some way doing moilach. And the opposite is true as well. If you're going to say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to only focus on my struggling child, but the other children will understand, that's the same Moilach as well. So this is the balance that we have to know. We can never use this Cheshman or Kha'al, sacrifice the needs of one child in order for the benefit of the other child. Of course, everyone who has these issues have to speak to their own Moilach, exactly how the balance has to be done. But yes, it's important. It's Seder night. The kids that are prepared properly, and the kids that are rested properly, and the children that want to be part of it must be given their attention and time as well. And not just say, oh, okay, we're not going to do a Seder, we're just going to rush it up and get straight because, and that's obviously a very hard balance that HaKadosh Baruch Hu um, put the, the situation in. And the one who's running the Seder, the father, the grandfather, knowing the dynamics of his family has to be able to work it, be able should be able to work it out. It's, um, it's, just, it's, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say a word. You know, we talk about struggling children and, you know, and I, I many times in yeshiva, and sometimes we think as much as possible, even if a child is struggling, I always encourage, you know, if it's if it's Talmidim or or anyone that they come. A child belongs by a parent's Seder. You know, sometimes even someone, someone says, oh, you know, I'm Rebbe Ksiri, could you invite my son for Pesach? You know, it, a child belongs by a parent's Seder. There's no replacement for a child. Obviously, there's certain situations that they did, you know, that, that it's not possible. But as much as possible, whenever, as much as the situation allows it, children should be by their parents for the Seder. It's interesting, like you said, the struggles that people have all year round comes out in a magnified way. Those five, six hours by the Seder you know, how to deal with this child and other children. These are things that people uh, struggle all year round. But this is when it comes out on a, on, on a aggressive on them. But, but Rebbe Nachem, as, as what we read about in the Haggadah, all four children are there by that one Seder. And the Torah tells you a different psukim how to address, but it's obviously talking about the same Seder. There's a time you're going to talk to the Chacham, Ein Maftir Macha Pesach. If you call me, you tell him to the Russia, to the Tam, to the Shani De Elishal, which is a young child. There's different type of children to the Seder, and they're all by that same Seder. And we thank Hakadosh Baruch for all the children. But if you know, everyone has the Torah. But how do we start talking about that Bon Bonim? 
Baruch HaMokim Baruch We thank HaKadosh Baruch for all the children. Thank you, Hashem, for children. Baruch Shonosim Tera La'am Yisrael Kineged Abba Banim B'divra Tera. If you're the Pesukim said, Vayikar Da'am Vayishtachvu. And Rashi says, when they heard that there, this is a, there was still a Mitzrayim, the day before Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, Moshe Rabbeinu told them, go take the Karma Pesach. You're going to be redeemed in a few days. They thanked HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Rashi said they thanked HaKadosh Baruch Hu because Hashem said that they are, that, that they're going to have children. And that, you know, it, 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 the, 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 the Pesukim before that says that your child's going to ask you, which is the question of the Russia, and they thank the Kaddish Baruch Hu, thank you Hashem, we're going to have children. All these children are here by the Seder. And the Torah says it's 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 a matana, a person should ask Siat Ishmael Kaddish Baruch Hu, to make the Seder, to have the proper balance that each child should get what he needs. Amazing. Here's a question that an 18-year-old girl sent him. My parents have been going to Florida the last few years, and we spent Pesach with other families there. I don't want to go into what's going on, but uh, but it's a challenge for me to be part of it. It doesn't really look like a Seder. What can I do? <laughs> this is a very interesting question. You know, one of the things that I did uh, when uh, when we know, like I said, uh, people started going, making their own store and going to Florida, I actually put together, uh, you know, Besides the video, and I could, try, I have Hilchas Leil Haseder, and then another pamphlet which I call, I wanted to call Hilchas Orlando. So what to do when from the moment you get off the plane or when you pull into the drive in Orlando, there's so many shilas that come up. Bir Chametz, Bedikas Chametz. I can't tell you how many times I get questions from Orlando. I forgot to sell this cabinet and um, um how to kasher, what to kasher. Um, what also has to be addressed is the Seder in, in, in Orlando. And uh, I don't want to, um, you know, and I, I didn't mean that this, this girl who's asking the question has nothing to do with um, going away to Orlando. This can happen anywhere. This is a, a this is an 18 year old girl should be able to have the conversation with her parents and should be able to say that. And there's certain times, and I'm not here to say this family should continue to go to Orlando. But maybe they should be making that going themselves, taking their own house and making the Seder alone. And I'm not here to, um, you know, there are many people who have beautiful storm there. But there comes a certain point in time when children get older, when a father has to be fearing his own Seder. Now, if he still goes to his parents and grandparents, that's one way. But even then, there are certain times, there's a certain time when a father has to take charge. And not only that, he has a mitzvah, he has to realize he has a mitzvah to be there for his children. And if his children are desperately crying out for that for that connection, she should have a conversation with him, either with her father or mother, say, no, maybe, I'm nothing against going to Florida, as you said, but maybe it's time that we do the Seder ourselves. Um, if it's not possible, but just as a personal recommendation to her, this is where you have, but you know, I don't, we don't, there's, there's no, um, there's so many good Haggadahs out there and before that, before the Seder, any teenager, a boy, a girl, but even for girls, get a good Haggadah. There's so many Haggadahs, there's different Pshatim. Um, there's so many uh, things that ways that you could do this on, on, on your own. And maybe if people will get the message and see that there are certain that 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 she's connecting in a personal way, this her parents will realize that as well. But I, I believe an 18-year-old girl can have a can have a conversation with her parents about it. See, somebody texted the question, what should they do if they're having a Seder with people they just don't want to be with, or they're having difficulty with, whether it's mishpacha or not mishpacha? Adults, how do you, how should they deal with that? Just uh, just concentrate on the Haggadah. Concentrate on the Haggadah. But, you know, you, see, see, reading your poll, it seems like everyone realizes that the, the Seder is a time that if, if you'll be busy, you know, again, there are certain times we might have to. I'm not sure if you want to do it, but we might have to rephrase this year now. This video, somewhere mid this year, it, the, these are getting obviously into very technical or personal questions about people wanting to do the seder properly, but just social uh, so, uh, uh, pressures coming together. 
parents, families have to be very honest with themselves. What is best for our family? And you don't have to be scared to make your own Seder. And that's, I believe, one of the tasks this year. That's maximizing Seder night. You don't have to be scared. There might be time to sit a certain family to say, we will make the Seder on our own. There's good time to get together. We can go Shabbos together. We'll, we'll, we'll get together. We'll, we'll, we'll go together as a few friends different times of the year. Seder, you have to know what will be best for your children. And I, I don't know what to tell the 18-year-old girl, but maybe I, could, maybe I should be addressing this girl's parents if they're listening. It's time to make your own Seder. Don't be scared to make your own Seder. You, 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 you want, you'll, you'll realize and you'll recognize what it means to connect in family in such a hail of a beautiful way. You know, I understand also sometimes it's hard for people and something like that the, 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 there's ways to do it. It does. We don't have to. We don't. And the the reward is so rewarding. You're going to be asking yourself, why did I do this here? No, obviously, if you could go to a parent or a grandparent with a family things. If it's walking distance, at least make one say to yourself. If in these situations, the, the opportunity like we had that, that we have these are these are chinuch opportunities, these are bonding opportunities, these are loving opportunities for all children of all types. like we said, connected above bottom the tired the tired the say is there for all of them. So, like I said, it's hard for me to. And you know, maybe get, getting back to the to the previous question from the nineteen year old girl as well. I don't know if her parents know what she went through or the people that are there, but maybe we have to tell. The, and it's very, that's obviously a very sensitive question because we don't know all the details who's sitting around the ta table. But if it's different families together, sometimes you have to say, okay, it's time for me to focus on my children and make my own seder. Just a general question that happens a lot. How to handle multiple children wanting to talk at the same part of the Agada? Each one wants them to feel like their Torah is more important. And when they overlap each other, when you just have a bunch of very involved children, the opposite problem, the so involved and everybody, and you have a bunch of kids and they all want to talk. And when this one talks, this one doesn't, you know, how do we navigate when you have a bunch of kids that are orangutan, that are deep into it? Alabai such problems all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Baruch Hashem. Yeah, yeah, Alabai. Um, so there could be, you know, again, if there's a lot of Dvar uh, Torahs and a lot of kids with notebooks sitting around the table, first of all, um, before anything we should do, we should discuss the seating arrangement around the around the Seder. And the children that need the most attention should be sitting close to closest to a parent, you know, and like I said, and a shout out there, there the mother sh could be and should be involved in the seder as well, and uh, and uh, you know they could have uh, one or two children sitting next to them, and even the, sometimes it's a younger child, you know, even looking at the the what what their the arts and crafts or the tvatari that they made could itself be given the the the, the attention. Now, um, I leave it each father to to say, you know, okay. You say first to go around the table. They can make either some sort of rotation. Um, the the the, the halacha does say that the parents should bring to the to the haggad the kloyis to to the to the say the kloyis very good. I mean, there's little prizes that you should be giving to to the children. So obviously, the meaning of kloyis is by manishtana that uh, you go from the youngest. If those who say that all the children say manishtana is that you go from the youngest to the oldest, which is a uh, Accepted, I think, an accepted meaning in Klal Yisrael, and then, like I said, Halavai we have the problem when when it comes to the to the actual Dvatiris, Some sort of a simple rotation system makes can make a lot of sense, where the father says, "Okay, you say the first one, then you'll say the next one." Then, uh, um, if you have some overlapping Dvatiris, then some kids are going to get upset, you know. You'll have to use this chachma how to uh, navigate this uh, this issue. It's Arba Banam, but one father. We have to figure it all out. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. But HaKadosh Baruch gave the kaykh to the father to be able to, uh, you know, HaKadosh Baruch, like I said, V'yigadzal lovincha. HaKadosh Baruch told each father that you could do it. Same way they said to the children, 
The same way the mitzvah is, that your child will listen, he told the father, you'll be able to do it. And you will be able to do it. The father could do it. If he's focused and he's uh, and he's interested, the main thing I would say, another thing is, a father should be interested in what his little kids have to say. Yes, he probably, you know, he heard the carpas every year and he heard that, but he should be interested. He should listen. He should listen to what the child has to say. I see a very, very important as, question as that I want to cover. Kassira, what's for all the people that are alone or single or they're in a depressed situation? Somebody texted me, they're just they're going through such a difficult time right now. People that are just are in a very difficult situation, they don't have their family, they're divorced, they don't have their children, they're they're older or they're single. Whether they're doing the say by themselves or going to people, they just feel in that matzah, that situation of sadness and loneliness. And the big part of Pesach, the big feeling for what we're talking about is the kids and dealing with this kid and that kid. It's that family sense of, of Pesach that makes it so special. But for whatever reason, you don't have that family sense. For whatever the situation is, the person who's going to the Seder, a person who's making the Seder, how do they, how do they, how do they go about it? That, that that's that's a very that's a very hard question because it was like we're saying so much of the I mean, Seder. I didn't say tonight she was easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We said yeah. We we know we discuss it. So we want to put ourselves into the, into the yomtiv mode. But the truth is, everyone deserves simchas yomtiv, and simchas yomtiv has to be there for everybody. And you know, as 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 much as we're saying that the 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 Seder yeah, has just next to me. I just want to say that they they're married for a long time. They don't have any children. Right. It's 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 a uh, so the 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 question is again how to you know like we said even if they would be invited let's take like I said a, a single a single woman you know even they would be invited out to someone but they're not connecting they know they feel awkward you know someone was nice to them a neighbor or, or even a family member how are they connected it or like you're saying someone that's married for quite some time you know and they don't have children for say we should help for Pesach night like the or Hamakod just says. Is is a big school to daven regardless of vinchi daven tagarish baruch that this should be the year that they have that they that they they have the Yeshua, that they have the children. Um, the it takes like I said, these people feel the the avdus, the being chained in their own personal way. They feel they they feel they feel the mara without having without having to eat the mara. They feel the the mara by the say they're without without having to eat them are and you know they're seeing everyone around them if they're by a seder or sometimes they're sitting either by themselves or with someone yes if you could get a seder is not a time to be yourself it's not a time to be yourself as much as it's hard as it's hard even if it means going getting invited out or going to a family member or sometimes even going to a hotel if need be to one of the programs because a Seder is not a time it's made, you see, ready for the time of the Karma Pesach. A Seder is supposed to be eaten with other people. It's something that's supposed to be shared. And the only thing I could say that the, you feeling the mar, the feel of the Pesach night is the way to connect. HaKadosh Baruch, I'm feeling the mar. Let me feel the gula as well. Let me feel, let, let me feel. That's the way that they could connect. It sounds very, it's very... It's very, it's 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 a very hard situation when everyone's around you and there's a, um, um, especially if you're going to someone that you're not you're not that you're not very close to when everyone's celebrating the yomtiv on a very you no, know, some way the way you should be celebrating the yomtiv and you're going through personally something very hard and that you said that's the mysterious nefesh who knows that mysterious nefesh that you're there by that seder he knows what it means a seder. Something that it's 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 uh we we know the seder is a uh, is the one time a year that uh, like we said Hakadosh Baruch comes to the house but the meaning of Klai saw that Aliyo Novi comes into the house Aliyo Novi visits every Yiddish house on on seder nacht Aliyo Novi is the one that brings besuras tovers say that's what Aliyo Novi comes for Pesach is a night that we could connect ourselves to that besuras tovers whisper that tefillah to 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 Aliyo Novi to Hakadosh Baruch on, on this special night, the uh, you know the, the the and the way like I said you know sometimes you know, you know it's a they think there's an alter the alter chesed shavart but you eat kairach but you, you you but when you're when you have when you eat kairach you have matzah mar 
or not, you know, the Kerech Matzamar, sometimes HaKadosh Baruch Hu expects us to have Matzamar together. Matz is a symbol of Kerech. Mara, we know, is a symbol of Avda. Sometimes a Yid, he's sitting in the Mara, but he still has to eat Matzah together. That's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants for us. By doing that, that's the greatest connection you could have to HaKadosh Baruch Hu at this time. Yeah, Rebbe, see a very interesting question. Somebody writes over here that they are a Balshuva and they really don't have any Masera. And they're learning all these different types of Manhagim. And some do like this and some dip the, the, the potatoes and some dip the celery and some dip a carrot. And all these different things that we have that are very traditional that come from our parents or grandparents. And they're making a Seder and they don't know, like, what should I dip or what should I do? Like, whatever. There's, there's, there's so many hundreds of things that... You know, some people wear, uh, some people wear kettle, some people take it off at certain times. Just like basic things that we've seen by our parents or grandparents, and they don't, they have that. So they want to know how do they go about to say they're, that they're, they know they're, they're, they're doing it the first time they're by themselves. They don't have the Masura. What are they, how do they go about it? So as Menachem said earlier, we would discuss, you know, we discuss some of the very hard and, 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 and heavy questions that it seems that a lot of things come out to say tonight. So, when it comes to, like you say, this this couple is a family of Ali Tshuva. So when it comes to a regular Shabbos, so Yom Tov, we have Allah, we have Shulchan Aruch, and we follow Shulchan Aruch. But Pesach is so packed with Minhagim and Misaira and each family minig. You know, if we go through, I'm sure, from the hundreds of people listening this year, everyone has their, their own different Minhagim. So what if someone doesn't have a minig, what they should do? But this is a, a, it's a always a good... Uh, rule of thumb and again i don't know the exact dynamics but sometimes a person if a person feels close to a family it's always good to sort of say hang your hat on something if a person feels close to a family and you could say i want to have your family minhagam i want to be able to start minhagam minhagam is very part very very important part and obviously you can't uh you shouldn't just pick and choose you say i'm not going to eat gabrux but i'll eat kidneys and then i'll eat that you know you know you want to be able to be somewhat mainstream so if these if they're part of a community it's hard to know the dynamics of the people asking the question or if they're part of a shul they could take some of the minhagam of the shul that they attach themselves to the community they attach themselves to or if they're part of some sort of you know they joined a you know community or hasidus obviously so they could take the bin hagam the Hasidus. But best would be here's where you know every 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 uh, um, um you know uh, every family that became Balachuva has either a Rebbe or Mayradar. Ask them what Min Hagam should we take upon ourselves? What's what's the accepted thing? Because Minhik is something that takes place an important role in Pesach as well. You know, obviously we can't confuse this as to said to everyone. We can't confuse what's Minhik, what's Halacha, what's a what's a Khumra, and obviously we have to know the with the with the what to draw the line to how Allah is important, and there are Hummus and then there are Menhagim, but uh, that will be my suggestion. And you know, sometimes a person could say, you know, I want to take certain Menhagim because it's a beautiful min minig, even though it's not my family minig, but I'd like to accept it upon myself. I just like this minig. A person's allowed to do that as well. A very interesting question. This is the lady's question. You ready? Every year when it comes to the Seder, I feel like a shmata. The work doesn't stop and it just keeps on going and going until the end of the Seder. Cleaning, getting ready for weeks and all the stuff for the house, cooking. And then when it came, comes to the Seder, I'm, I'm, I'm out of it. I'm not be, I'm not even physically able to be involved. And then my husband gets upset at me that I'm not involved. What's the answer? Uh, I think this question is probably an un- uh, a, a, an unasked question by many, many women in Klal Yisrael. We're uh, going to ask a, it. Yeah, we, we, we're going to bring a question because it's a, it's so true. Everyone knows what uh, what a woman does to bring in Pesach and then to say the night. And uh, it, it's it's a, a, a feeling that then you want to find it, all your hard work should come to fruition, it comes to its climax and then on say the night and then either your husband is uh, schlepping or being myrich and you're still in the kitchen and you're not completely done and you want to be part of it or he's falling asleep and, and you just don't feel you don't feel the Seder. Um, it, it's, like I said, I'm sure many families have this uh, 
to go through this. And the only thing is then that I have to be able to address the husband. Like we said before, we spoke about the 18-year-old girl. We have to just address the parents. I have to address the husband. We have to remember the words of the Shlach Kaddish that I wrote down before the Shir. The Shlach Kaddish writes, that Yach Salvesav Yisnag Hu V'ishtay Kemelech Uchemalka. You have to realize that the Seder is a joint effort between a husband and a wife. That's the way the Shlach Kaddish writes. Kemelech Uchemalka. And then he says, Uvnei Vesek Ibnei Malachim. If you're a king and you're a queen, then your children will be like, and if you're a king and she's a queen, then your children will be like princes and princesses. Uvnei Vesek Kivnei Malachim. Um, the the if if it's if the husband that's addressing the husband to realize if you want your seder to be the right way, put yourself in that picture of a melech as a king. You must realize a melech goes in tandem together with a malka together with a queen. Now, on a practical, that's very nice to say on a very you know in, in, in a in an altruistic way, but on a practical level. You know, there are things that have to be done. The Seder has to be cooked, you know, the Seder has to be cooked, especially when it's not Friday night. There's a, um, there certainly should be certain parts of the Haggadah where, you know, you should wait and say, okay, let's everyone come together. If it's a certain part of the singing, if it's a certain time, maybe towards the end of the God Haggadah, um, I, I would say, you know, especially many women, they want, you know, we have to realize the chiyav of Isipirit Sis Mitzrayim, the mitzvahs of Pesach night are equally there for the men and for the women as well. There's no difference between man and woman. A woman is mechuyav in all mitzvahs of Seder night just as much as, as a man is. She's mechuyav in the Arabic places, she's mechuyav in matzah, and even according to the Ashkenazim, but as far as the woman even lean on the side on a, on a pillow of the Ashkenazim, we don't, but she still has to be sitting, she has to be part of the Seder. In a practical way, a, a, a husband has to realize if his wife is busy, there still should be time I'm waiting for mommy to come in from the kitchen so she can be part of the Seder, at least, you know, certain parts of the Seder. If it's the Makis or the child saying it, if it's the there will be parts, obviously, it's a practical way. She is the hostess that she wants to make sure it's that, that well. But the husband should know that there are certain parts that he should be waiting for her and shouldn't be rushing her. If she's not ready for the say that I don't want to get, obviously the halachic issues of the Zaman and the Shiram, I'm not getting into the, you know, but for the, on the, on the family way, the practical way, Shalom Bais, well, way, he should be waiting her and taking her into account in all parts, as the Shalom Kaj said, that the woman is the Malka of the Seder. Here's another question that a lot of people have, and also maybe not so much asked. I'm very anxious every year that I didn't clean the house properly in Pumas. Please give me some guidance. What should people do uh, when they feel that they're not sure they're trying their best, but they're sitting by the side and they're always thinking maybe, maybe, maybe. So Menachem, that, that, story, that story that you started off with, I think, is the answer. No one is ever sure. And the end of the day, we all need siyata deshmaya, and we know if you put in the proper, to, 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 if you put in the proper work, and the, the mothers and the 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 the, the Yiddish mamas, the way they prepare for Pesach, they can be assured that the house is completely chametz free, and they have nothing to worry about. They have nothing to worry about, because when a person does his hishtadlis, you do his avoda, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, then does make sure that you're completely chavis free. But if a person doesn't leave, it doesn't bring Hashem into the picture, and he feels it's up to him, or she feels it's up to her, like the story you said before, and did every chumar possible, and he didn't realize that there was a, there was a piece of bread falling on the top of the, on top of the bottle. It's, we do what we can do. Hashem knows our shortcomings. Hashem knows what we can, what, what, uh, what we're able to do. And Hashem does not expect more. And I, I'm telling you, no one has any ever <laughs> have to be worried about that I didn't clean properly. And even if you found the pumpkins on Pesach, and you have to, but there's a lot of for that also. Yeah, you mavatel everything, every every everything that you do, you clean, you mavatel, you, you you sell the chametz. Any chametz that you first of chas v'shalom sees chametz mitzvah, it's not your chametz. You have nothing to worry about. It. Obviously, you have to get rid of it. So chas v'shalom shouldn't be a mitzvah, but it's not your chametz. You don't have to worry about it.
there was a famous story that they said by Kesha Nafshi. I just want to mention it. That somebody had a struggling kid and he came to the Seder and they, whatever, he was very upset at his parents. And he took a piece of chal and he threw it on the Pesach table. And the mother and father were about to explode. And the father turned to him and said, that we did our part. This is not like nothing. And they made it. They got rid of it. Not, like, not a big deal. Like garnished. They had a very beautiful side. It was just a very powerful story. Um, okay. Let's go to the live question. You're on. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you for taking my question. Um, I'm <clears throat> living in a difficult situation with my spouse. It's a difficult marriage and an addiction. And, um, and I have a son who has depression and he moved home. And it's um, it's very difficult living here. And I'm just not sure how would we do the Seder. Uh, I'm sorry, you, you have a you have a son that's together, an, older, that's... an adult adult son who came home. Who um, came home? So yeah, it's you, that's... your spouse, and and your adult son. Right. I, I'm going to see. If, I'm going to see if I can invite anybody, but it's still. Difficult with my spouse. Is is he aware of the situation, your adult son? No, he has. He's. He seems like he acts young. He doesn't really understand. And my husband um, has made him his wife. I mean, like he does everything with him. Although my husband stays home most of the time, but um, he he caters to my son instead of me. So um, it just makes everything difficult. Right, so the question is more, it's, just, it's, it's the question is directly to you. Because it seems like your husband and your son will do a Seder as that as if nothing's going on, if there's no, 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 nothing going on, on behind the scenes. But your question, personally, you know how you're going to connect to the Seder. That, that's what I'm assuming that's that's the question. Yeah, I guess also on how to um, want to be at the Seder, I want to be, um, or feeling of the Seder when, Everybody's so like depressed and angry, and it's hard to work with. Right. So the the you know some this it seems like these are some of the questions. So we're talking so much about the greatness of Seder night and the kedusha of Seder right. night and the simcha of Seder night, and so unfortunately sometimes we're in a situation. You're saying that you're you know to. to uh, I don't want to use the term, but you're sitting almost dreading what I'm going to have to be sitting to get together, um, acting out the Seder or being there part of the Seder or doing the mitzvahs of the Seder, but really not wanting to be there and not enjoying any part of the Seder. Right. Uh, now, I, I, like I said, to know the exact situation is hard. And if you can invite someone, if that's going to help you, if that's going to help the situation, you know yourself if that's going to help the situation. Um, then that will be the way to go. If that's only if that's going to help the situation, you know, I don't know the exact dynamics to know if it's just going to exasperate the situation. Then maybe you shouldn't, invite, so, you know, invite someone because yeah, this is the uh, you know the the dynamic, the family dynamic of a seder is important, right? And it's it, it's very important and. As much as you might feel disconnected, but if your son at least doesn't know what's going on, at least just think, okay, I'm doing it for him. I think this is part of my mysterious nefesh, and I'm doing it for him to keep the Seder going, to keep the family dynamics somewhat, you know, somewhat yomtiv dick, even though you know it's really, um, it's really a difficult situation. But as much as possible, you can tell, like, I, like we said many times it's throughout this year, Tell Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, I'm doing it because it's Pesach. I'm not into it. I don't feel. I'm. I'm not appreciated. I'm going through something very, very hard. But I'm doing it because this is my cheres And let me my get my cheres, whatever your cheres means in your personal way. Obviously, every person knows that personal cheres, and that should be the personal way you do it. To just do it. Say I'll do it the same way they've done it in other trying times. And I want to say this to Ushi and Menachem. You know, and hearing the questions, we're talking about the beautiful storm, and sometimes we see story, we hear stories about how how they made the seder during the Spanish Inquisition, or from Isaida, we made the seder in, in Auschwitz, in 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 Bergen Belsen, and we know stories of people. We have people in our communities, we have families. We're hearing this tonight that 
are doing the same with Mesiris Nefesh. They're doing the same type of Mesiris Nefesh. It might not be Mesiris Nefesh with an SS guard or Nazi guard outside the barrack or a, a guard of the Inquisition going up and down the road to see if there's a light coming out of a basement. But there are families that are living on our blocks and living in our communities and dominating our shul. They're doing the same to Mesiris Nefesh either because it's a struggling child or because it's a girl that feels has trauma or because it's a there's addictions, different ways. And we tell HaKadosh Baruch Hu that there's, they're no different than those who did the, the Siddharam in the 1400s in, 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 in Spain and those who did, do, did the, did, did the Siddharam. They're and they're doing it. Why? Because that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to do. It's man cheres to somehow feel the cheres. And that's what I could tell you, that, uh, that I'm personally in awe from the people that ask these questions, and even from the mothers that said that they're still working hard and that and they're doing it, how to tap into the cheres. And you're, 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 you're the inspiration for us all to do this dharma even in these trying times. Okay, thank you very much. Perfect. So let's do one more question and then we'll go to the closing segment. Um, Somebody writes a question, they're going to their in-laws or the parents for the Seder. They have to go. It's not like, a, you know, whatever, optional, whatever the reason is. They have small kids. And the Seder they're going to is not enjoyable for the kids. It's it's very difficult, the situation, the sleeping arrangements. And they just want to know how to make their kids feel geschmack by the Seder and how to make them feel good when it's a very rigid, uncomfortable situation for the children, the way it's set up. How do they deal with it, whether it's parents, in-laws, or just wherever they're going? Okay. First of all, the, you know, the, those asking the question, the father has to realize that he has a mitzvah of a higadot of Levincha. And the Mepharshim explained, the God Paiskim explained to it, that if you're listening to a seder by a, by a grandfather, if there's still a separate mitzvah, so I don't want to get too technical, if there's still a mitzvah to a son to tell his own son when the grandfather is, is fearing the seder. And but the place can do say that at each father to his children should try to sometime during the night tell something specific or special to his own child, even though there's a grandfather or 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 someone and so you know someone in the family that's reading the Haggadah and leading the Seder. You have an obligation to be there for your children if it's a difficult situation. And this question, you know, like I said, I've I've gotten this question before. Try as much as possible to give your children something over the Seder night. Have your children again. I don't. I can't control the family. I know the dynamics are saying it's somewhat of a difficult situation, but try to have your children sitting next to you. Listen to them. Look at their haggadahs. Look at their pictures. Look at what they're doing. Make some 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 movement with the makas. Bring out your personal puppets. Bring bring it's someone else's Seder. But usually, if it's a father or shver. And in-laws, they won't mind if you bring your little puppets, your little, um, um, you, you, you know, some of the toys or different things that you can do out that your children should connect to you. And in that way, they'll feel that personal connection. It will be, bo- be very, both you, you do the mitzvah properly, and it will be very, it, it's also, it sounds like it's you know, both for the mother and father, it will be a very elevated experience, even in some of this difficult situation. Like we said, the sleeping arrangements, listen, it's not easy moving into parents and in-laws and sometimes in a very uh, tight uh, sleeping arrangements and there are many families and you know everyone has their own needs and wants but as much as possible sometime throughout the night try to connect your children in a personal way to your own personal children there's two more very tough questions I think I want to cover even though I said I wouldn't go to closing somebody wrote a question that they don't have a husband by the say there um and it's the mother and they have a few older boys i know it's a, but it's a general question and there is no man present at the seder and there's just a mother just a woman and maybe they have teenage boys whatever how does that play out how do they how do they deal with Vigantal Levincha? how do they deal with the whole seder when the situation is like that right so it's 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 a very it's 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 that's a very hard question but if the mother can if she can if she can, then obviously, depending on the situation, I don't know if it's you know if it's if it's a family that I'm sure lost the lost the father or if it's a divorcee. That's a different situation. But if the mother can, then she could be the queen of the family. She is the queen of the family, as the Shlaka just said. Sometimes she's a little bit apprehensive, so she could tell her boys and make it. If especially if it's older boys, it could become a um, 
and the mother, and if it's older girls as well, if it's only the family and it's not a serious issue involved, it's, 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 it can become a very lively and gishmak experience. You know, it could be a, a fun experience. You know, I mean to say in, in an older way, everyone could say a piece, everyone could say a... a could 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 lead part of the say that one could do one night, one could do another night, just to make it a interactive and an interactive experience. So, one of just a follow up a question. Somebody else said, then we'll go to closing. Somebody's put making their first seder this space. I think they have a bunch of kids. They're always by you know their parents, the in laws, and they're making the first seder. They want to understand the mahalachis the way they were brought up. Always was you know seder was a very serious thing and a very this. They personally have seen you know you know people dress up and people do all the shtick make it much more entertaining they want to know if that is is that like a mis, is that like anti the messiah or is it the wrong thing or whatever it takes to make the children happy and enjoyable whether it's dressing up like paray or running around in pajamas or throwing frogs at them is that if that's going to make the kids gishmak even though it's a little kiddish and immature is that the proper malach so the tzatuka is it, is it anti the messiah? I don't think it's anti the messiah because there are people that do it, and there are those. I, I just don't think that should become the main focus of seder. You know, it's such that the seder should not become a perm masquerade where everyone's wearing a different costume. But sometime during the makas, throwing frogs, or even during someone wants to dress up like it just to get the kids involved, especially if it's younger kids. Once the once the kids children will get older, they'll think it's a little bit childish. But there is a, a very important part in involving the children in Seder. But let's not get carried away with all the props and all the uh, and all the frogs. You know, we have to know we have there's a Haggadah as well. There's serious times as well. You know, it's part there's mitzvahs Allah as well. The mitzvahs that have to be done. So if you have the proper balance, you can do it. You know, even though he didn't see it by their father, but he knows that this is gonna pique his kids' interest. Is this gonna get his kids? We can do whatever, right? We do many things in order to Kadesh Yushala tonight. My share, my shrek yeah. once said there, all of a sudden, he had somebody bring a sheep when they were saying, well, they you know, the carbon Pesach, and the sheep walked yeah. into the house. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone that to say, and I'm sure that was that was a very good way to get all the children involved. Everyone gets involved. Regardless, we're talking about throughout the night that different people have different, you know, different types of children and different things. You could do certain things to get everyone involved and get everyone involved, but keep that balance. And a person just to, you know, to, like to sum it up, if a person does the vigadit to Lovincha, Hakadosh Baruch will give the siyat deshmaim both that his children will listen, and a and and b that he will be able to give it over properly. He will be able to say it over properly in the proper way. But he has to have, and we hear here even from the from those the children that ask the question, how desperately everyone wants to connect to the seder. Hundred percent. Okay, let's go to the closing segment, Rabbi Kassira. So again, Gersh Yashkoyach coming on. Um, obviously, Hashem wanted you to be here tonight and be the Shliach and giving Doidum Chizik. And it was a hard night for you. It was a hard night for a few people to come on tonight. Doidum came on. It was tremendous Chizik. And I hope everybody takes words from Rabbi Kassira said and brings it into the Seder. And they go in with proper feelings. And uh, again, if anybody wants to join the WhatsApp uh, group every Sunday, we have a community chat. Uh, the number you can text is 732 Three one four seventeen ten, and I'll send you the link to join the community chat. You can go to menachembernfeld.com. You can sign up to his weekly emails. We send out the shirim, the flyers, the replays. Again, for anybody that's here the first time, first of all, where have you been? We're already in the fifth year. That's number one. But number two, every Sunday night at nine thirty on this is my D, we have tremendous topics and chizik, and we really cover a lot in Klai Israel. We hear as a zich chaverim, be mechazik, whatever the situation is, and to grow together. And this is the last year before Pesach, unless something happens that we have to make an emergency share this next Sunday night. I am getting a lot of requests from Eretz Yisrael today. I got three or four texts from Eretz Yisrael. Though I was just really in a terrible situation over there, very scared. Um, and we'll see what happens. But as of now, the next show Metzim will be after Pesach, May fifth, with Rabbi Shimon Russell. The topic is going to be what's crisis, what is crisis, understanding what our children need from us and how we can be there for them for their needs, not our needs. And uh, it's really for people that are just dealing with regular children, but just they need a, a little bit more curving with the chinuch and, you know, what the kids are dealing with today. It's going to be a very powerful program. Please join us, Mr. Shem. Everything will be, is recorded. It'll be on menachembermanpo.com. If anybody has any questions, you can reach out to coachmenachem.gmail.com. Everything is recorded. And Mr. Shem, 
Um, if anybody has any questions, again, give him a coach Monachem. Tonight's share is 182. If you want to listen to it on the phone or if you want to give somebody the phone number to listen to it to get the chizik, number they can call tomorrow, 732-305-9011. 732-305-9011. If anybody wants to be in contact with Rabbi Ksira, you can email him, Rabbi S-Y-K, Sandra Yasek Ksira, number one at Gmail. And that's Shem, if he could answer you, could try to answer you, try to be in touch with him. Ksira is a very chashva person. Thank you to all the advertising sponsors, the Lakewood Scoop, Elinara, Five Town Central, Chaya Kalfan for JCN. And I'll go to closing the Menachem, the Rebbe Ksira, we'll leave it to you. And um, and uh, leave the oil. Like, I just want to say tonight, what I've taken out from the share, besides all the important parts, is obviously there's a tremendous amount of pain in Israel and there's a tremendous amount of Tsaris. And we, if we are to have our children and we're in a good situation, we should be so thankful to Hashem, whatever their situation is, the there, whether it's a Chacham, Tom or Rush, wherever your children are, that you have children, especially if the children are coming to you, say there, even more, the shrach and the thank you to Hashem. And the second part that I got is that whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through, that is your Mitzvah time. That's your situation. Hashem made it for you. Hashem made it custom for you. And Hashem wants you to feel it. And if your situation is so difficult and it's so hard, Allah has come the 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 schus and the schar you have, but trying your best to make you say that as holy as can be is a very, very high thing. And I say this word many times, it's, Shem doesn't judge people's lives, you know, if it's, you know, if you ended up with a nice family and you have everything perfect, oh, he made it. It's your starting point and your ending point and everything in between and all your DNA and how things play out in your life. If a person, even though he's thrown difficult situations or he's in a difficult situation beyond your control and wherever you're holding, you have to make the best of it. And Hashem knows your situation and Hashem is is with you throughout. It's like the famous, you know, the, 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 the famous line they say by the Goyim, the guy turns to God, he says, God, where were you? You know, he sees the footsteps, you know, the Rebbe can see that line. He always sees four footsteps, his and God's footsteps. And then he sees only two footsteps. He says, God, during my hard times, you weren't there. You, I was just walking alone. God turns to me and says, I was holding you, my dear son. I was holding you. That's what we have to feel when we're going through these times that we feel alone, we feel alone, we feel hard, we feel tzibrochen. But God is holding us and he wants us to tap into it. And again, I'm going back into everything that's going on in the world. I'm just so you know, so blown away from the situation and the world. It's, it's, we're dealing in really, you, you know, the the end of days, you know, nobody has the time, but we see what's going on in the world and the situation. We talk about Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim as if something so abstract and somebody texts me, how do we connect? We didn't go out of Mitzrayim. We're living through difficult times and people that are living in America, you could just hear the news, people that are living in Israel. I got the text today from people. Their mom is shaking in their houses. This is a world war we're dealing with. And, and we, we have to be realized that we're holding by the gula, we're holding by the end, and we have to connect with Hashem and all the years and all the Messiah and everything is here with us. Like I said before, because here there's, there's maybe 30, 35 Sadarim from the time we left Mitzrayim till here. Yeah. The Messiah is very close. People think it's 3,000 years ago. But I was by Seda with my Elta Zayda, and he was uh, 85, you know, and his he was by his, you know. If you go back, the Messiah is not so far from us where we're holding the connection is there. And we should all be Zoycha and Hashem Rabbi Ksira. We're going to send your video out to everybody of the Seder and everybody who needs it, who wants to watch it, or just wants to get a basic understanding. We'd love to send it out. We'd love to send out your, your basic Halachas guide, your Halachas Orlando guide, whatever we can send it and try to send it out to everybody. We'll send it to Menachem. We'll try to send it out to everybody. And again, I grace you for everybody for joining. And every Shabbat Chakosh for Sameach. Should we all be Zoycha to Mashiach Tzikinu and Coach Menachem? Shabbat Thank you very much, Rabbi Kassira. There's a lot of chizik tonight. I just want to mention there's a medrash that the Yidin and Mitzrayim, the Yidin didn't know how they're going to get out. You know, we, we're looking back, so we know the story, but they didn't know. And they used to get together, I think it was Shabbos, they used to get together and the, to get the chizik they needed and fabring and talk and how, and everybody was with their situation. I'm thinking just by coming together tonight um, on the Zoom, just to, to discuss, you know, everybody has their Mitzrayim, everybody, Mitzvah Shem, Hashem should help, we should get out, or, or get out. But sitting together and being Mechazek and thinking, what can I do? Um, how I'm going to get out of this? I don't know. Hashem has his ways and it's going to happen. When it happens, it's going to happen very fast. And I don't know how what it's going to look like, but I have to be ready and I have to be mechazik myself and I have to believe it's going to happen. Everybody in their own situation. What can I do to make things a little bit easier till it happens, to believe that it's going to happen? And that's that's really the amuna. 
That's that's Pesach Benayit, the, the Muna that we're connecting to our situation, connecting to Hashem. Like we heard many times tonight, whatever you ever see, you said, everybody in their situation, you and Hashem know about it. Could be nobody knows about it, but it's you and Hashem. And that's where you can talk to Him, ask Him, please help me out, make things easier, and I should be get, get out. And Mr. Hashem, we hope that this year we should be able to be makir the Korban Pesach in Eretz Yisrael. Let's hope. Mayor of Imenu, Mitz Hashem. Amen. Sira, two hours after such a shear, what comes to Rabbi Kassir's heart to leave the island with Pesach? What comes to your heart? I want the Lord to write some Levi. Like you said, we had a long shear about to say tonight, a maximize the say that, but what you're going to say is we have to just prepare for the Seder, do our shtablis. When we come to the Seder and we spoke about different situations, we hear, you know, you know, we would discuss before at one point the different men hugging a Klai Yisrael. I think this year tonight, we heard about different situations as Klai Yisrael, the different Sidar and Klai Yisrael. There's so many different Sidarim and Klai Obviously, we dive that Kodesh Baruch that we should be part of the Sidarim, that this family, family harmony, and family Simcha, and then, you know, and Zaydis, Elta Zaydis, Irei Nikluch, together. There are others who don't have this situation. But whatever the situation is, realize like one of the uh, the the people the participants of Shia said, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, we're coming to the seder. We're doing your rotten. Is the seder going to be perfect? We don't know what a perfect seder. We tell Hakadosh Baruch Hu, we did every Yiddish mama knows she prepared. She doesn't have to worry. There's any chametz. Every father knows he did what he has to be able to do for it. Make sure that as much as possible, his children are happy. And then we say, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, I'm sitting by your by your tish. As conclusion, the Gemara says in Masechtas Brachas, the Gemara uses this term about the Seder night that Pesach was sitting at de Rachmana was sitting on HaKadosh Baruch Hu's table Pesach night, yes we're fearing the Seder but HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kaviyachal is the host and therefore however it works out, if it's a quick Seder if it's a slow Seder, if we're falling asleep if it's the way we decided, we way we thought we we're going to be, we're sitting we're doing the Ratzon Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu we're doing the Shtadlis, please Kashav Zichino Lasader Oyser, we're doing the Seder we should be to be able to do the sage during it in your shalim with the carbon pesach, like we said. Hearing tonight's year, there are people that do the seder of serious nefesh mamish the same way you did in, 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 in the pressing times, did it, and that their avoid is, is so marutzatakadish baruch. Hu. Everyone should have the issue, we should tap into the the hashboys toivis of these halacha days leading up to the Yom Tov, the days of Nisan, the the chayish yeshuas by makifas, klayis only the yeshua gedolah, and it's a good time even yes by the say that to remember the Yidden and Eretz Yisrael. The Amitak Kodesh Baruch it's a great opportunity that Hashem should when we're sitting together, and when we're sitting at the table say that is to thank a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Thank you, Hashem, that I'm sitting by the Seder with my family, and we should continue to have just nachas to kedush from all our children. Amen. We named the shir correctly. We're maximizing our Seder, whatever our situation is, because it's halik. Even the, the more difficult it is, the more halik it is. So it is the right thing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the Seder that, like the morale says, it's full Seder, but that's the Seder. I'll, I'll, I'll finish off the way we start. Like we watch for the vision of Seder. Let's remember, Hakol Beseder. Everything lies in the Seder. And, and, we should, and, no, and everything should, we should be Hakob Seder and everything. That's the bracha to us all. Hakob Seder. Everybody have a Hakob Shusameach. Have a beautiful Pesach. Enjoy it. And and, and, do, and dwell in the in the family and what you have, whatever it is. Make the best of it. To, to really feel this year, the, the, the Kedusha and the Halakite, the holiness of Pesach. And thank you, everybody. And thank you for our Messiah Snafish for coming here tonight, Rebbe Kazira. And we should all be Zachary Gulab, Shlema, Mehir, Mehir. And everybody, we'll see you right after Pesach. Don't go anywhere. Zaygazon. Okay.